Hello and welcome to The Sherlock's Show. I'm Georgie Corridge-Cole and joining me on the sofa today are Lou Huff, Laura Black and Becky Hall. Welcome ladies. Coming up on the show today, I'll be joined by a top dermatologist who's going to be answering your questions and sharing her essential tips on beating adult acne. Plus, I'm really excited to introduce a new segment, Brand Focus. In it, I'll be joined by founders of some of our favourite brands across fashion, beauty, interiors, food, home, basically any brands that we think have something really special to talk about. They're going to be telling us how they've made out, what their best sellers are, and what's new in their collections. And today, it's an affordable handbag brand that you won't want to miss. But before all that, we've got lots to talk about. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are in South Africa for a 10-day tour. Africa, not just South Africa. Uh, with Baby Archie. We were talking about this before we went live, saying, really, we just want to talk about Baby Archie. Yeah. Yeah. He so looks cute. so sweet. He looks, I mean, he's like a mini Harry. He Sorry. is a mini <laughs> Harry, isn't he? Harry, isn't mini, he? He's even got the little ginger hair coming up. So cute. But also, you can so see Megan in yeah. him as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can. But yeah, so, so cute. And apparently he's wearing H&M. Oh, I know, I love that. His little stripy dungies. Yeah. They do, yeah, they do quite sweet children's clothes, really? actually. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm a big fan. Mm. Yeah, I am too. I feel like they're great for babies. And then they're quite good for girls. And then as they get older, I'm sort of coming back into it with my older ones. Yeah. But. but I think it's quite nice for the royal family to be wearing. You don't usually see the children in high street clothes mm. so much, yeah. do you? If they're at a formal occasion, they're usually in something a bit more high end. Anyway, love it that they've taken him. I was thinking back to the days when Charles and Diana went on their tours. And do you remember Diana standing there and the boys just running into yeah. her arms oh. or vice versa? And I was thinking, can you imagine having, you know, underestimate how hard the royal family worked yeah. and how hard must that be not to see not your children yeah, yeah. So hard. you know in the crown when the queen and philip go on their tours yes and they're just gone from the children for, for so long for such a long period all that time um anyway i think she's doing a brilliant job megan i mean i'm i'm not hugely a fan of the fashion right now but you're nodding you I think we're all sort of in yeah. agreement yeah. aren't we I think it'll come back though she's obviously yes. just she's, she is a stylish woman but yeah maybe yes. just, she's she's only I always think in. she looks best in her sort of jeans and a, and a white shirt yeah, yeah that's me what too. I think Agreed. she too. wears really well but um, I think she's doing an amazing job I mean five yeah. months she's there with a the baby meeting entrepreneurs incredible yeah. I mean that's hardcore isn't yeah, it yeah, so I think we all need to get on the Harry and Meghan campaign <laughs> PR campaign um, good on them uh, and we're talking about fashion Paris Fashion Week is in full swing uh, but we're not going to talk about that we're going to talk about that next week uh, we are instead going to discuss Kate Moss who is looking amazing Apt. I mean when when does she ever not really She's, well she I, <laughs> there's obviously a few little little blips but she's still got that sort of cool rock and roll like she's the queen of british fashion she is but i feel at the moment she's kind of glowing as well yeah. she's she obviously looks healthy. yeah she looks way more healthy well and apparently she's, she's given up drinking style. for a year did you read that oh no i didn't really? that's what they said that she's given up drinking wow. and as a result the glow her skin is, is absolutely yeah. glowing i don't think she's i think god i feel like we're gonna get absolutely slated <laughs> for say but you know it is our job to pick out the best um and we're saying right now she looks great but i think there was a period where she sort of lost it a little bit, but yeah, my God. Yeah. It's her, and also, it's her hair. Mm. Just, I don't know, everything, whatever she wears, I just think you just look really cool and mm. effortless and it, easy. And yeah, she's just got something, I think, that a lot, lot of people try yeah. and emulate. And it's just that there's something within her. Yeah. To yeah. me, though, it's just the health of her skin. Mm. I think that is just, anyway, perhaps Dr. Angeli later can tell us <laughs> what the secret is to that. But uh, apparently, also, she is, there's rumours that she's going to launch her own fashion brand. Ooh. Ooh. With her daughter as the face of it. That's oh, why wow. I heard. Oh, that would be nice. Mm, so maybe that's Ooh. why she's cropping up. She's okay. getting back on the circuit. And anyway, anyway, watch the space. Um, we're going to talk about confidence. She's clearly feeling confident at the moment with that glowing skin. What is the key to confidence? There was an article on Man Repeller um, with somebody asking, How do you feel more grown up? Is it about confidence? Is it about something that you wear? What do you think? Is there, is there something you do? Is there something you go to in your wardrobe to feel confident, to feel grown up when you get dressed? I think, for me, being a bit smaller as well, it has to be, to feel confident and more grown up, I think both, has to be quite tailored. So I would definitely say like a nice structured trouser or something that just 
fits me and doesn't look too baggy or make me look tiny yeah that would immediately make me feel more confident and also a really good pair of jeans nothing makes me feel more confident yes they that. fit well yeah I completely. think I'm similar something with a bit of structure kind of gives me that bit of confidence but also I think if I if I'm ever too tight in anything I'm so suddenly agree. yeah sort of hunching over and not feeling yeah. comfortable and fidgety and so it's kind of having the room to yeah. breathe yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think as well it's really about being true to your own style. Mm. I think if you you sort of you try something different or you try and sort of copy what other people are doing or what's out there then you're emulating something else. I think if you have to be true to yourself and what you feel good in that's yeah. what makes you feel confident um, and I think that's really important. I also think for me, like putting on a heel, whether that's a boot, yeah. but like that just kind of gives me like, like my shoulders go back. I just yeah. feel like a little bit 100%. more. Bit I mean, it's such a classic one. But I know, there, it there feels is, obvious, but it really, it really, really does. You feel more powerful. Completely. For sure. If I'm wearing something a bit more cash and then I just put on a kind of a cool boot, I just feel a bit more yeah, yeah, like, yeah. together. Yeah. I'm with you though. I think tailoring is, is putting on a suit. You just feel mm. well. Put, jeans. Don't get me wrong, I wear jeans yeah. loads, but I don't feel grown up in a pair of jeans. No, no. Yeah. it's not. Yeah, it's not grown up. I've put it. Yeah, it's compensating. And yeah. it's grown up a look you want to emulate. I don't. I feel like I'm past that. I'm probably too grown up now. But for my, you know, when I was younger, I probably did. But I, I don't get dressed thinking I, I want to look no, grown up. I no, I don't think I do. think it's more about feeling sharp. Like yeah. More yeah. Yeah. Sort of yeah. yeah. More like a. I mean, it could be called grown up, but in my eyes, it would be like a yeah, sharp, yeah. focused. You've yeah. got this kind and of cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, on that subject, um, I wanted to know who everybody's people are that they go to for inspiration. I sometimes find if I'm going shopping and I look at something, I think, would that person wear that? And if you had to name two people that you thought dressed with confidence that looked grown up, are you not someone you know really young and? It, Fashion, too fashiony. Mm. Um, who are the women you think of? Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sense. yeah. yeah. Uh, Laura, let's start with you. So I actually don't really know how to say the name of one of mine, but I think her name is per Perny. Do you know? Who? Yeah, Perny. she's Perny. amazing. Yeah, she is amazing. She's got the balance of she always looks so put together and preened, but she's got a relatively neutral colour palette and. I don't know, she, I just think she gets the combination of smart and casual and marries them together really well. Yeah, I agree. Um, so that's and number then one. Florence Cools from Des Moines Antwerp. I don't know if you know her. No. It's really but cool. It's really cool. She, again, has got quite a simple colour palette, but she just wears the material that she wears. You just know it's just of the most amazing quality and she's very simple but she's really true to her style oh, with really? everything she wears um oh. yeah i love them both. she's got an amazing shop in antwerp yeah Beautiful. and her own collection mm. la collection which is on net oh God, oh i know exactly who you mm. mean i love that collection amazing. i followed that collection for years yeah. Uh, I tried to buy from that collection. It used to be really hard, but now you can get it on a yeah, exactly. Yes. I know there's a sort of white tuxedo style dress. Exactly, which is just, yeah. oh, I love. Amazing. Who is the slightly older, mature lady? Is she in her 60s, 70s that we've, oh, we've, we've written about? Ben's wife style? With the curly hair? No, she's got like a sort of grey bob. Anyway, I love her. She's really cool. We'll have to oh, share the um, link. Uh, Greth. Oh, I want to say Greta someone. She, wa she walked in the um, Devo show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Love her. Yes, and really, really She's cool. She's really cool. Check her I out. I think it's Greta. We'll, we'll link in the show notes. Devo show. Yes. Exactly. Uh, Lou, who are yours? Um, so one of mine is Roberta Bentler, um, mm. a sort of design consultant, and she has just impeccable taste. Very design designer-led, um, but I just think the way that she pairs things together even if she's wearing like trainers she'll wear a tailored trouser and she's like she accessorizes really, really well so she'll belt things she'll tuck her knits in I know it's just everything looks really considered but not in a kind of over, over, the, top. over mm. the top way yeah. exactly okay um, number two love her and number two is Emmanuel Alt again if I'm having one of those days where I just think like 
oh, I'm so bored. I, I don't know what to wear. I just like, I go back to even maybe 10 years ago when Street Style was really about the editors at Fashion Week. It's always the French editors that I would always save their pictures. And it's kind of 10 years ago, they still look as like their, their outfits are still relevant to now. Yeah. But do you need her for inspiration? I mean, she always wears the same thing. No, but it's she not, wears a pair of jeans, a white t shirt, a blazer, but, and a pair of courts. It's like, not so every much day. like inspiration. I think it's more just kind of taking it back to like a uniform that works and always yes. feels like I polished and together. Teasing, teasing. So that, but that I, I that. think she's great too. Yeah. But she, she does, I mean, she has had to say the same thing every time. Yeah, like uh, Becky, who are yours? So makeup artist Violette, she is Parisian as well, so she's already got a head start. But also she just pairs things like a really sort of what would be an ugly boot with the prettiest skirt and just immediately it looks amazing. She's so effortless. She's also great to know what you would wear a red lip with because obviously that's quite daunting for some people. So when she's got it on, you can just see what works. And then number two is Lisa Aikman. I Aiken. Think, Aiken. But she has got the most amazing style. And it's, again, it's just pairing things that are really simplistic, which is in keeping with my style. But it's always very tailored, always very chic, and it's very neutral mm. tones. So I just, absolutely, that's yeah. kind of what I wish I looked like every day. <laughs> and she's fashion director at Moda Operandi at the um, moment yeah. and yeah. looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. She's got, she's like, cool. she's she's got a really cool, cool wardrobe. Yeah, yeah she's really cool. cool. Wardrobe. Okay, well, we're nearly out of time, but mine are no surprises. Kareem Rockfield, just love her. So she's the kind of grown up I look at and think, can you still be hot when you are whatever she is? Sorry if you're in your 60s. Yes, you can is the answer. I'm going to get in trouble for that comment too. Anyway, Karina's proof that you can be. She looks amazing. No one rocks a leather pencil skirt like no, Karina. Yeah. Smoky eyes, messy hair, a shirt unbuttoned a bit too low, a pair of fishnets quite often. And, some, and she does tights with strappy shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Like nobody tight. else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she really rocks a pencil skirt like yeah. no one else. You're yeah. so right. And she's her daughter amazing. as well. Oh, yeah. She's amazing. She's no, cool. amazing. Cool. Yeah. cool family. Love her. And then Lou, we've got a shared love for Georgia. Tortini. Lou and I send each other pictures of her. Pretty much like daily. Like, obviously, this one's this one. I don't even comment now. I'm she's just incredible. like, oh my God, she's so incredible. And she's so, she goes for it. She's really out there. She's mega sexy. Yeah. I love dark haired, naturally beautiful women like Kareen, like Georgia. And she's just, she gets her legs out and she goes for it. And just They're pretty nice legs. They're yeah. pretty insane. Yeah. <laughs> but it just goes to show that as you get older, you can still put yeah. it off. I mean, she's in her 30s. I'm not saying she's remotely old, but she's, a, I, feel, I think she's a grown up woman. Yeah. And she's amazing. So anyway, cool. There we go. That's definitely all we've got time for. Uh, next up, I'll be back with the founders of Aurora London to look at some of their stunning handbags. When friends Sarah Auerbach and Davina DiCarlo couldn't find well-crafted handbags that could be personalised, they decided it was time that somebody filled the gap in the market. Fast forward five years, and Aurora London is one of the most popular accessories brands in the UK right now with a selection of stylish totes and crossbodies at really affordable price points. I'm thrilled to introduce the ladies as our very first 
brand focus. Thank oh, you. Thank Welcome. You so Thanks for being be the here. first. You're like the guinea pig for oh, this new one. We'll be guinea but, pigs to enjoy that. <laughs> you know, we come across so many great businesses at Sherlock's and there are some that we just really love and we've seen we've seen grow and build as we have as a business. So Absolutely. I sort of feel like it's it's a complete no brainer to put them on the show and, Thank you know, you. show people what we love about you. Um, Lovely Thank you. Thank you. It's we great love being here. I've known you really for a while I know, now. I know. Um, go back. You started the business in what year? So Sarah and I have actually known each other for ages. We were business partners. Um, we've been business partners for 12 years now. We met whilst we were working at LVMH in Givenchy Beauty and Marketing PR. So it was an amazing universe to learn how to create and develop a luxury brand. But we both always knew at the back of our minds, coming from entrepreneurial backgrounds, that we would one day be self-employed independently of one another at that time mm -hmm. um, and then in 2007 we left we literally just thought that's it we're going and we set up Fresh Attitude Events which was our first business um, that we bootstrapped it was um, an international events management company for leading luxury brands mm -hmm. and we were traveling loads it was incredible great time a great times but it became really tough with a young family we were doing like we were all over the place, all uh -huh. over the globe, all the time. And then we got to a point in our kind of business life as well that we started to get itchy feet. And we're like, we need to do something else. We've got the bug. We've created something that's great. Why not try something new? And we already had the seed of an idea, which was Aurora London. And were you looking around going, there's a lack of bags? Because you didn't start with just bags, did you? Well, we actually, what happened was originally we kind of felt, okay, there's a need there. There's something there that's just not being met. Um, and we discussed it with our friends, our families and colleagues. And it was kind of a need that we felt was, was it, people were in agreement with. And it was the idea that we, you know, we had, at the time we had young families, um, we had mortgages, we were self-financing a business. And we didn't have the, the we didn't have the, the cash or even the, the 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 desire to spend more than five hundred pounds on beautiful bags. But we still loved gorgeous. You still wanted it. And it's not a great style, but you just. I mean, it's crazy, the price. It's crazy, 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 crazy. crazy. The thing is, we're both handbag aficionados, so we do have we've we've kind of satisfied that need and we know bags but we did feel that there was a huge gap in the market for something that was affordable but still really nice and, and leather direct to consumer. Yeah. and leather exactly and it was that that we we built on and, and the thing that was actually the most difficult was finding that factory finding what could help what was going to bring our designs to life because what was important for us is the leather you yeah. hit the spot um, yeah. we needed it to be made in southern Spain where all the luxury leather handbag companies are made so that's where they're made so that's they where they're made. are made in the same factory as leading luxury names that you would know. It's a third-generational factory that's been there for ages. It's all very artisanal. Still handmade. Um, still handmade. All our designs are bespoke to our design. So we don't buy them off the shelf yeah. Yeah. and then just choose the leathers. It's actually designed exactly the size, the width, the depth, the zip. Amazing, amazing. Everything. So basically, you're getting a luxury product at incredible prices and so pricing was really cru crucial to your success pricing was except i mean we, we just knew that it had to be right we worked you know everything that we do we work with that end price in mind yeah. so we have that end price and we work backwards yeah um so everything it's not just something that we team up and think well you know yes we'll look at trends and we'll look at ideas but it's also about what that end value is mm -hmm. um, and what that end need is because people need different handbags for different situations and we're going to go through some of them in a second but i mean other than price yeah the fact that they're leather for that price. Yeah. Um, what makes your bags different to others in the market? This well, is your this is your elevator pitch. This is, this pitch, is the elevator pitch. I think you know, in especially now, it's people want luxury. They want them to be affordable, but it's also about sustainability. You know, we're talking about fast fashion all the time. We we are in total agreement. It's not about buying things just for the sake of buying things. So again, when we design a bag. Every time we go to the drawing board, we look at the size and we think, okay, how can we reduce the amount of leather wastage possible? So, so handbag si our handbag sizes are a particular size to avoid the actual cut like of leather we're losing. It. Clever. Also, we use what we can design leather offcuts. So okay. a lot of designer handbags, they don't use all their leathers. We can get access to those. So a lot of the leathers you see, particularly in our limited editions, that's when we're in the limited edition 
Okay. Once they're gone, they're gone. And another thing is that we really try hard. So we're really passionate about our bags, but we try very hard not to compromise. Now, yeah. obviously, that can be difficult. There is, there will be slight differences. So we don't always use brass metal wear. It will be metal. Um, but in terms of compromise, the only place that we have really compromised is for us, the price. Mm. Okay. And we've made yeah. it more affordable for our customers to buy more of them. But okay. we've created an edit of bags that we feel that every woman needs. And that you can use season after season. Amazing, amazing. Well, let's have a look. And also, we've got to touch before we look at the bags on personalization because, yes. you know, personalization has just taken off. It just doesn't end. No sign you know, it. it's, it's yeah. amazing, isn't it? You know, you scroll back 10 years and you. What was personalised? Exactly, now yeah. everything. And it's just that yeah. extra special bespoke touch. So, you know, if you are looking for an anniversary present or a birthday present, it just works. So here on this beautiful bag, this you can... This here, we can get on the on the, the Gigi, on the Athena. Most of them actually can be personalised. And it is just that little added extra. People aren't tiring of that trend. No. I know, it's we, we, When we well, launched why would it, you? We Why were... wouldn't you want your initials exactly. on your bag? Exactly. I mean, it's, it's fun. But it's something that's just not going away, mm. Mm. surprisingly. Love it. Okay, so you bought some in today. Yeah. yeah. Um, talk me through your best sellers and you've got a bit of new bit of best sellers yes so um, the closest one to you is the Gigi we love the Gigi uh, that is our best seller okay. that's obviously a crossbody bag it's really sizable it fits a tablet all our bags have a signature it fit lining a it fits that's a tablet great. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really really it's like a TARDIS you yes, can actually fit a lot more you in, fit there a lot in that Mary, I can do a Mary Poppins you can do now. a Mary Poppins out comes uh, lamp. <laughs> Uh, it is really roomy, isn't it? And with all our bags, um, you'll have the signature blue lining. There will be a key fob popper, uh, credit card holders, and in most of them are zip wallets. The idea is that wherever you are, whether you're coming home late from work or rushing to the tube, you can just immediately find your essentials. It's really nice. And some of these bags, there are a lot of this style of bag on yes, the market. Absolutely. Yep. Some of them have very thin straps yes. that feel like they might not last forever. Yep. This, I have to say... Um, there's a couple of girls in the office with them and they are very hardy bags. They're very hardy yes. bags and it's in the leather as well. The grow grain leather, it really takes a multitude. And can I just say that's £120? Pounds. 120 yeah. pounds, I mean, yeah. amazing, £120. Yeah. Pounds. Okay, this is bestseller. What else have we got? So we've got the Willow bag, which is actually, I should have started with that one. That was the one that we launched at this the is beginning. Your first, I remember. This is what Sheer Lux did. And actually, we launched with Sheer Lux. Yeah, I remember. That was great. It was, it was. So this is a great bag, isn't it? Well, the great Sorry, thing Sarah. about this is that it's got the versatility, um, and all our bags we work on versatility, but this one is the ideal travel bag. So it'd be worn crossbody, obviously, in an airport. Then you get on your holiday, and there you have it, your clutch bag for the evening. Nice. Um, so it's a really nice one because you keep all your essentials, your, you know, your, your travel wallet, your passport, really yeah. safe underneath your coat, and then go on holiday, and there you've got your chic clutch bag to take dinner with you. Day to night, I love that. Is Day that 70 night? pounds? That's 70 pounds. 70 pounds? Yeah. Amazing. Okay, we've also got, what else have we got? So, so we've the got original the best Athena, which is a three-in-one um, crossbody belt bag. Um, that took us a long time to design and get right so oh, it wasn't I too heavy, see. so it could fit lots of stuff. Mm. Um, so you can wear it around your waist and you can wear it across your body and then you can take the belt out which you can wear on its own. There's this chain strap as well you can attach it to that you can use it as um, an evening bag. So we've got clutch around the waist and then which is very cross, cool. Kind of like very across the, the body, across the torso. Yeah, around lovely. the coat, cinch at the waist. So this it's goes surprisingly we wanted to create, I mean, we saw that the belt bag um, trend of phenomenon was, was really kicking off. But what we found is a lot, of, um, a lot of women, particularly our friends, were quite nervous about wearing a belt bag. It sort of didn't feel, I feel like yes. we're going back it's, to the 1980s. It's, it's very Roberta Bentler, it who was, Lou just mentioned. <laughs> exactly. And actually, what we found was is that you could have this elegant belt bag, but it didn't have to be cumbersome. It didn't have to be clunky. Yeah. Um, and the litmus test was when we worked. So we design everything around what we know that we will like and our friends and our customers will like. But the litmus test is also once we've tried and tested the sample and battered it uh, in our busy lives. Um, yeah, and that's, that's when it goes through to production. I love that chain. That is really cool. That has been surprisingly um, yeah. successful just because it's... You know, it's a bit Marmite, I think, about bags. You either really love them yeah. or you don't, or I you're like just them too other scared. people. I'm just not sure. I'm You've got yeah. to try it. I'm not sure on me. Okay, so that's 145. There, can we talk about this? I love we this. We have the Fun Cleo bag. So that was really, we, we actually brought that out because we wanted a fun uh, bag. We wanted a bag that people could use particularly in the summer or as an evening bag. Um, and love the it. Clio was just fun. It was a really fun one to, to create. We actually added on the tassel right at the end. Yeah. We just felt it missed something. Um, right. And in fact, again, with the, it originally had a different um, metal strap, but we yeah. just felt that one 
which was the was Athena one. It just looked a bit. Yeah, it was a bit. It's a bit heavy. Um, so that one worked that. better. And that colour. I mean, and amazing. it's fun. Yeah, and that's. I've got a load of colours, and they're, they're really fun. They're that's really fun. Very nice indeed. That's Thank hundred pounds. I mean, it is amazing. Now we've got to talk about this. The Cara. I mean, these we are flying, aren't they? I, I love spotting these um, as I go along wherever I am. Um, but they, I mean, they're everywhere now. They're doing really well. We, we, we are really proud of that bag. We love it. That is um, probably our second bestseller, or, or coming close to the Gigi. Yeah. Um, that was like our grown-up bag. Yeah, you know, we felt great. that that was missing um, from the current collection. And we felt that we needed something that you could either, it's like what you were saying earlier, you know, you want sometimes something that will just lift your outfit and make you feel a bit more pulled together. Yes, because and this is the grown-up sheet. This is grown the grown-up sheet. This and grown you, can, up. Yeah. you can wear it on the school run, you can wear it with your jeans and a blazer, or you can be going to a meeting. Yeah, it's great. It will just make you look perhaps yeah, a little bit more polished. And actually, yeah. I've often been asked where my Celine is from. Yeah. Um, and I say, I, I've wrapped my brain, and this is the closest I can think Thank of. You. Thank you. That's yeah, sort of, really lovely compliment. You know, that different but similar, and it's a really good, it's a really good alternative. And this is 100 and... That's 185. 185. 185. And it's leather. That's Safayano leather. Yeah. And that's, the Safayano is great because it doesn't mark as much. No, it's much it's great. Durable. It's very wear it's wearable. very minimalist bag. looking. We love a clean aesthetic and yeah. something that's quite clean. And it comes in an amazing burgundy. Yeah. Beautiful blue. burgundy, beautiful green. Um, yeah, lovely Black. blue. Black. Yeah. Congrats on that one. Thank you. I think that's an absolute Thank winner. Thank you. Um, anyway, last but not least... We've got the new bag. So these are the new bags that are literally about to launch. They're available on pre-order now. Um, and this was a true label love. In fact, this came about from our customers. We had customers saying, listen, we, we want animal hair. We really want some fun, trendy animal hair. So obviously we knew that we needed to find a, a cow sort of hair derivative of that to make it as sustainable as possible. Um, and, but it was about finding the length of the hair. And the, little, the tiniest of details that are so inconsequential when you talk about them are actually really important in bag design. So we had to get the right length hair that wasn't too long, that would stick out at the seams, which is what sometimes happens with some fast fashion brands. That's where they make their compromise. But we need to get the right hair length that was short so it would look nice and cute when it was built and when it was um, sewn together. And this is the result. We're really proud of it. It is durable. Um, it's cow hair that's been dyed um, with the zebra effect. Oh. The tote is hugely roomy. And yeah. then we did it's a, a great size, yeah. isn't it? Great size. And again, it could just you could just be wearing something really plain and it will just transform your just outfit. Transform the outfit yeah. But still quite kind of not too out there. Yeah. Well, it's great. I, that, great. I don't think so. Feels great. Looks great. It, it's it's Thank brilliant. You. I think it's really impressive. And, you know, there was such a gap in the market. So Thank you. Um, congratulations. Thank you both Pleasure. so Thank much. You for having us. Thank you Thank for coming. You. Um, of course, all the product featured will be listed in the show notes below. And we've got some really exciting names coming to join us for Brand Focus over the next few months. So do keep your eyes peeled. Next up, I'll be talking adult Acne and putting your skincare questions to Dr. Anjali Marto, a leading dermatologist. So if it's something that you battle with, then stay tuned. What are we here to do today? Uh, at Arquette. Huh? September is my absolute favourite time of year to go shopping. You're really investing in those Cute. basics which are going to build up your autumn wardrobe. Well, that's cool. The best. These vests are everywhere at the moment. Smart pants with a stretchy waist. What's not to love about that? Oh my God, okay. Charlotte would love that. Full with black. Love the neckline. Cozy but not too tight. Yeah, it's a winner. Have we gone there? Really soft. Yeah. Shirt, straight leg, boot cut jeans, and these amazing boots. Now I've got on this amazing mat, which I actually tried on last autumn, winter, and I just didn't buy it for some reason, but I kept thinking about it. It's so nice when they bring something back like that. What are we doing now? We are going into the new boots in Covent Garden. For a very sneaky, beautiful, new, affordable, high street hair care. I have been using both of these. I'd completely biodegradable. Um, more treatment brand. Provide you wipes and everything. Maui. Dry body oil spray. It smells of frangipan. I had no idea this had launched in to boots. You ask any dermatologist what they recommend and it is CeraVe. BB Beauty. It's literally like whipped cream. Well, Rich really wants me to try on a dress. You want to try on a dress. Can, can we try on a dress? <laughs> Holy shit, that is the nicest dress I have ever, ever worn. What's happening now? <laughs> you got a veil on. You got a veil on. I am going to hide the vent today. Oh, hello. I mean, oh. look at this. You get to the end of the aisle and then you pop that bag. You look fantastic in that. That satin really suits you. So you could have both, couldn't you? Get married in that and you'd have this for the party. I think that might be my London wedding. This could be my country wedding. How many weddings are you going to have? Seriously considering two more yeah. as of today. 
You might associate spotty skin with adolescence, but in fact, us grown-ups certainly aren't immune to nasty breakouts. From how to beat sweat spots to the products that really work, you have sent in your questions in their droves, and I'm thrilled to introduce Dr. Angeli Marto, a leading dermatologist. He's here to answer them all, I hope, if we can get through them all in time, is quite a lot. We'll do our best. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Um, I think we've got about 20 questions to get through, so we're going to be speedy. I'm going to fire yeah. away. Um, so, first of all, adult acne. It's, it's a problem, isn't it? It feels, yep. it feels like you've been robbed, doesn't it? So I think this is a common misconception that we have, that you suddenly grow out of your teenage years and your acne is going to disappear. Mm -hmm. And about a quarter of women will develop acne for the first time after the age of about 23. So it's much, much more common than you think. It just seems really unfair, I think. That you've put up with them for years. When is this going to stop? That's what I always think. Um, OK, is there any specific food or drink to stay away from when you're trying to get clean spot? skin. So if you've got a big event or something coming up, is there anything you need to stay away from? So this is a really common question, you know, is there anything I should be eating or drinking in my diet that can affect my skin? And the problem is that there's no real superfood or super fix for your skin in that way. You know, a diet that's good for your skin is a diet that's good for your general health. Mm -hmm. So whilst I'd say it's a good idea to limit the amount of sugar, for example, in your diet, you shouldn't cut it out altogether, you know, okay. they're not going to be a quick fix. So not too much sugar and lots of water, presumably. Yeah, but even then, you know, the idea that's going to flush out loads of toxins, a little bit of a misconception. Okay, all right. Shame. Uh, somebody says, Sophie Davis says, I constantly get blocked pores on the bottom of my space, of my face, sorry. They're not blackheads or spots, though. Any advice? I mean, it sounds like it may be acne. One of the problems with skin is it's a really visual organ, so we kind of need to be able to see what the issue is. But getting spots, particularly on sort of the jawline, yeah. the lower neck, and the lower part of the face is really common in women. And finding that spots tend to flare up around the time that your period is due. And we okay. call that U-zone acne, as opposed to T-zone acne, which often affects teenagers. Interesting. Is that because our hair's in the way? I just think I'm not helping myself with my... Hair touch on my face. Do you know, I don't think we know what the answer is, but okay. there does seem to be a slightly different pattern in teenagers versus adult women that suffer with their skin. Okay. Uh, Serena Harwood says, how do you get rid of sweat spots? So sweat spots... What are sweat spots? So sweat spots, in my mind, are the kind of spots that you get on your back or your chest or your bottom if you've been doing a lot of working out, I if see. you go to the gym a lot. And I think one of the reasons why we tend to suffer is athleisure has become really popular. So a lot of us will just wander around in our gym kit yeah, so shower straight after the gym. Shower straight yeah, after the okay. gym and maybe salicylic acid wipes to wipe down your skin afterwards, which can penetrate the pore and break down oil production. Yes, I've heard that before. I know, it's so true. You go and do your shopping in your gym kit and there's sweat stuck mm, to your face, yep. isn't there? Okay, um, what are the best products for controlling hormonal spots on the chin? This is Eleanor Johnson. So generally, good ingredients in skincare are things like salicylic acid, which is yep. a beta hydroxy acid, which will break up oil production in the pores. Glycolic acid or lactic acid, which can basically fade the dark marks or the redness that you can get after spots. And then maybe a little bit of tea tree oil directly to the spots themselves Really? As tea well. tree? Yeah. Oh, God, that's all I think of when I think of the 90s and being at school. It's like smothering my face in tea tree oil. Um, okay. How do you stop blackheads? This is from Shaw. So blackheads occur because of excess oil production. If you're producing too much oil, your pores are going to get blocked and they're going to appear as blackheads or comedones, which is the medical word. Oh. Best couple of treatments, salicylic acid, glycolic acid, and a little bit of vitamin A or retinol. But you need to be patient. It can take up to 12 weeks to see any benefits from any new skincare. And the commonest problem that I see is people will use a treatment for like a week or two weeks, get bored, say, it's not working, okay. and then throw it so out and get something weeks. new. So you've and, got to be patient. And is that going to prevent them, or is that going to get rid of ones that are there? So it will chemically exfoliate them out, so okay. it will get out what's there, and then stop new ones okay. forming. Should you squeeze them? Never a good idea to squeeze spots. No, never. Okay. Uh, Leah, advice to when you feel a spot is coming, when it's sort of tender but there's nothing to see yet. Can you get it away? Push it back in. That's really tricky. And what I'd say is if that's happening, then salicylic acid can come in sort of targeted spot treatment that you put directly onto the spot overnight that will reduce the inflammation and the redness and may stop it coming out. But there's no 100% guarantee. Do you know what I used to use at school? Talking about tea tree is a witch hazel tea tree stick. They are so good. Yeah, and again, because they've got alcohol in them and they're yeah. an astringent, so they they're won't not too shut strong. the pool down. Uh, the best product for acne scarring? 
So acne scarring is a tricky one, only because if you've got indented scarring, so there's little divots in the skin, yeah. I'm afraid to say there is no skincare product that is going to fix that. So what is laser? So laser or microneedling. But if you've got marking on the skin, like red marks or dark marks, the treatment for that really is things like lactic acid, glycolic acid, alpha hydroxy acids, which will chemically exfoliate. Acid is coming up a lot here. You've got to get mm. on the acids, people. Um, okay, and what about laser versus microneedling? Is it a pain thing? Is it a... What, what's going to get you the better not. results? Usually, laser is much more likely to produce better results. You know, okay. microneedling, you're just sort of delivering little holes into the skin to generate new collagen. Sure. But laser itself is firing heat and energy as well. So laser often produces better results. And what, what are you looking for if you're going to do, if you're going to laser away scars? Try to. So I'd say that if you're going to find a practitioner, make sure they've got experience in actually dealing with both acne and acne scarring. Okay. That's the first thing because you do not want to be having laser treatment whilst you've got active acne. Do you give laser treatments? I do. Good, yeah. great, great. You know, yeah. I'm just checking. I'm like, right, yeah. job done. Just go and see Dr. Angeli. Yeah. Um, okay, so somebody who's... Properly qualified. Because, properly qualified. yeah, laser in the UK is poorly regulated, so okay. anyone can buy a laser and fire it. So you want to make sure the person that's doing it knows what they're doing. Yeah, true. Um, is the contraceptive pill a long-term solution for treating acne? It's not a long-term solution. Um, the contraceptive pill can be a good treatment. It takes about 12 weeks to kick in, so it doesn't work straight away. Okay. But chances are when you come off it, that tendency towards back. acne will come back. Um, which pill should you try for? So ideally it should be a combined pill. The okay. progesterone-only pill can trigger acne in some people. Is that right? Mm. Okay. Um, uh, how do you treat hormonal spots without going on the contraceptive Hell, from Kimberly. There are some off-label medications that a dermatologist could prescribe called spironolactone, and that's really effective for female adult hormonal acne. Is that right? Mm. Gosh. Uh, what ingredients should you look for in skincare if you have oily, acne-prone skin? So here Insomnia. are ingredients again, always going to be your beta-hydroxy acid, your salicylic, your alpha-hydroxy acid like lactic, as well as retinol, your vitamin A. Okay. Uh, the best serum or moisturiser for oily, acne-prone skin? Yeah, so the one that I tend to recommend, don't work for the brand, is La Roche-Posay's Effaclar Duo Plus, the non-tinted one. And it's got okay. a bit of salicylic and a bit of niacinamide in it, which can be quite helpful. Okay, so you've said what you should look for. What should you avoid if you've got oily, acne-prone skin? So I think one of the problems that I see is people overwashing their skin. Um, if people have got oily skin, they think that the more they wash it, the more they will take that oil production away. All that happens is you irritate the skin further. So that's one thing you want to avoid. It's making sure that you're using the right skincare, you're cleansing morning and evening, you're moisturizing in the morning as you need to. Okay. The second thing is avoiding any products that have got really thick, creamy consistencies. So cleansing balms, facial oils, don't massively love them for acne-prone skin because they can promote blackheads. Okay, so what, what's a good moisturizer? You don't want something too oily or do you uh, moisturizers that feels... If you're finding that moisturisers are feeling too heavy on the skin, yeah. um, you could swap that out for a very light hyaluronic acid serum instead. Okay, so ditch it for serum. Okay, Kiara says, can you advise any makeup skincare ranges for people with problem skin? Yeah, there's quite a lot of brands that are quite good. Um, you know, if we're looking at two purely budget brands, brands like The Ordinary, um, mm -hmm. The Inky List are very good, and then okay. sort of moving up the scale, I really rate Murad as well. I think they do a lot of nice acid-based products. And if you're someone that suffers from very sensitive skin, yeah. someone, not somewhere, someone who does, or you're prone to eczema, same yeah. question, but for pe people yeah. with it, that kind of skin. So if you've got both acne and eczema, that's a really delicate balance, because if you dry the skin up too much, you're gonna cause eczema. If okay. you over dry it and you put loads of grease on, you're going to cause acne. So in that case, I would always say you're looking for products that are geared towards sensitive skin. Okay. And you need to be very, very careful with using lots and lots of acids because you may find that your eczema is going to break out. Yeah, okay. Um, can you just talk us through, going back to problem skin, mm. um, can you talk us through what a good routine for somebody that is suffering should look like? What is an ideal bed bedtime routine? Okay, so at night, the first thing you want to do if you wear makeup is make sure you take that makeup off. Yeah. That is step one. So I usually suggest a micellar water to remove everything. Think. Okay. Then after that, a foaming cleanser. Now, foaming cleansers have had a lot of bad rep, but for oily, blemish-prone skin, they can be really quite helpful. Okay. So a good foaming cleanser that may have salicylic acid or glycolic acid in it is helpful. After you have done that, using something like a salicylic acid toner or a serum where you put a couple of drops onto your skin, put it over onto your skin before you go to sleep at night can be really, really beneficial. That's it. That's three steps. Yeah. Okay. Simple. Uh, can you become immune to spot creams? You don't tend to become immune to them this. unless, of course, they contain antibiotics in them. So if a doctor okay. has prescribed you something that's antibiotic-based, you can get resistance to them, use long-term. Okay, Yolda says, can you use 
a mixture of different things on your skin at once, i.e. Tretinoin and Zinerit. Yeah, so Tretinoin is vitamin A, okay. and then Zinerit is a prescription-based product that's got zinc and a little bit of antibiotic in it. The problem is if you start throwing lots and lots and lots of products at your skin, you're much more likely to get irritation and dryness as well as still have the spots. So okay. I wouldn't recommend you throw lots and lots of things in one go. Okay. What are your thoughts on having facials? Uh, well, I'm talking sort of zeny facials versus something that a dermatologist would do, is that counterproductive? So facials are an interesting one because a lot of people find that their acne can be triggered by stress. Now, if you're a stressed out individual and you know that that's the case, going and having a facial is going to reduce your stress levels. So the indirect effect of that may be that it helps your skin. But if we're talking about proper long-term benefits, a medical grade facial that involves a peel or a laser is much more likely to be effective sure. than something which is more about kind of relaxation. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, Sinton says, what are your thoughts and advice um, on face masks if you suffer from eczema? You need to be very, very careful because a lot of face masks may contain a lot of these acid-based ingredients and they're very, very likely to trigger eczema or dermatitis and make the problem worse rather than better. Okay. Finally, can you give us three must do's and three don'ts yep. for better skin. Okay, so number one, from a general acne point of view, is make sure you're incorporating acids into your routine. Number two, if you're using acids, acids can make you sun sensitive, so it's very, very important that you're wearing a decent sunblock. A lot of sun protection agents can actually block your pores, so the one that I tend to like is the HelioCare. 360 the gel oil free one. I thought you might say that. Yeah, it's, it's probably my favorite sunscreen. And then the third thing is if you are struggling with your skin and you're using skincare and your spots are getting worse or it's starting to affect how you feel and your mental health, it's really important that you seek help early for your skin and you get help from a medical professional rather than struggle by yourself. Yeah. Three don'ts. Well, number one is please don't pick your spots. You know, that is going to lead to scarring and scarring is much, much harder to treat than acne itself. Number two is you do not need to be layering 10 products in the morning and 10 products at night. If you do that, you're much more likely to develop irritation with your skin okay. and problems with your skin. And the third thing is you don't need to spend an absolute fortune on skincare. You know, look at the ingredients. The ingredients are much more important. Okay, and you rate the ordinary, don't you? Yeah, I do. Okay. Amazing, Dr. Angeli. Thank you so much. We got through all those yeah. in record time. <laughs> um, you've got clinics on yes. Harley Street. Yeah. And also in Chelsea. That's correct. Okay, so you know where to go. Uh, that's it for today. We'll be back next week with great fashion, delicious recipes, and some brilliant relationship advice. Uh, a huge thank you to Aurora, to Dr. Angeli. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.